the video recording. So we're doing here is a demonstration of how to dial in a bandsaw wheel, a force manufacturing bandsaw. Today we're working with uh, 20 inch wheels mounted on a model 24. We already have installed a position, a dial indicator, running the rim of the wheel. This is a magnetic face. We have a fancy auto cabinet here. We can go over and run a couple of the wheel rim so we can spin the wheel rim the indication. How about giving a, a, a quick close spin just so you can see the wheel moving your spin? You can see it runs high and low. This is a result of the wheel not being perpendicular to the wheel shaft. Show the hub here. So the way these wheels mount is you have a tapered bore, so this the dark gray locks the wheel onto the spinning shaft. The wheel in this one is painted orange. The spinning shaft is a silver bit in the middle, and the dark gray is the tapered bushing for the three screws right here. So three screws go through the tapered bushing and thread into the orange wheel. So now, in theory, if you simply pulled all three of those screws down with equal force in a nice random pattern, just like they taught you in mechanics school when you were um, fighting head gaskets, the wheel would pull down square. It doesn't work that way. In practice, we have to tune these things. We have to actually advance. We can tune these things. So we start off with, I believe it's about 150 inch pounds. Start with 150 inch pounds on these screws. We'll run into a maximum of about 180 inch pounds. But uh, our expert bandsaw technician here will show us how to spin these wheels, find the high and low spot, and get the wheel running nice and perpendicular to the shaft with no run out on the bell indicator. Let's see what you got there. Okay, that's not it. That's probably going to be my starting point. That's not it. I'll go back to my starting point right there. I'll bring this one up. So you can see the dial indicator moves as he uh, pulls up on that screw. Stop there. And we'll come to this one. And we'll bring it to that point. And we'll the third one. that point right there. I'm going to go and catch the other two up. By going like this. Need to note that I'm on this initial set. I'm not going past my little set point until I get all the screws equal to that point. And approximately the same amount of force applied to each one. about 10 more thousandths, starting on the one that is slightly lower than the others. Here, note the F20, that's kind of a marker point. We'll come up 10 more thousandths. equalize again.
all three locations dialed in. They're hitting pretty much dead nuts. Now it does fluctuate a bit between those spots, but that's either some what, machine anomaly or does the uh, as long as it's running the three spots are good, we'll call it good. Some of it has to do with this rubber that overlaps onto the rim. As long as you hit these three spots, it's like a triangle. So I've got them tight to the point now that I'm only going to advance about 5,000 for the next step. So he's right on 80. Right on 80. He's right on 80. I'm going to advance another 5,000 to try and get my final four. What do you have your pork right now? 15 foot pounds. Stop here. just in about three minutes here. Bring this one up about a thousand for sure. Very gradually. it is now I'm only going to advance probably two to three thousandths to get my final set. That creaking is the unlubricated thread. That's a good point. Um, no we should mention there's no lubricant on the taper surface, no lubricant on the threads, and no lubricant between the bushing and the shaft. These are all dry clean threads. Doing it for 20 years, you can knock it out in a few minutes. For our, uh, our customers doing this on their own, it might take a little longer, but the uh, the is pretty easy. Uh, set up your dial indicator, 
clean, dry screws, and patience. Thank you, David. The preparation is unique.